Good morning, Reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. This week, we are talking about a few staple items that I feel like every reptile keeper needs. These are things that I feel like you should have around the house to use a lot, or some of these things are just things that I feel like you should have just in case you do need them or when you need them. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by the Dubia Dude, so make sure to stay until the end of this video to find out how you can save 10% off of your entire order at the doobiedoo.com. Let's go ahead and jump right into this video. First of all, is either RepiSafe or dechlorinated water on hand? You guys know that my favorite thing to use is a RepiSafe because it is super fast and convenient and I don't have to worry about keeping bottles of dechlorinated water around my house. But for obvious reasons, having these things around is going to be super important. You never know when your animal is gonna need new water and running out of water isn't great. This is why I love RepiSafe because you just take normal sink water and you put a couple of drops in and you have dechlorinated water that also now has additional calcium in it for your animal which is super cool and those bottles of Repti Safe last for such a long time which is also really awesome. I have never just run out of Repti Safe because I order them from Amazon and usually when I see it's getting a little low I just reorder and I'm good to go for next time. Either way one of those things you need to have around your house and readily available. Next up is a disinfectant or a cleaner. This one may be a little less obvious if you just got your reptile, but you do have to disinfect those tanks. There are lots of different options here. For a long time, I was using the Flukers brand, but I recently was sent some different brand of disinfectant by a friend, so I'm super excited to test that one out. So this video was pre-recorded a while ago, and since making this video, I actually did test those new cleaners, as you guys may have seen in my reptile tank cleaning video a couple weeks ago, and they were work wonderfully. I'm definitely going to be switching to these over the flukers that I was using before because they are so perfect for what I need. And there's also F10. A lot of people use F10 cleaner because it is veterinary grade. F10 is very expensive though, so I have not actually tested it, but that is one that a lot of people use. You have to disinfect your tanks and you have to clean up poop in tanks. Even in bioactive tanks, you have to clean that glass. So having this on hand is imperative. Next up is just some kind of Sterilite bin. This is one that I never would have thought of when I very first got Zaz, who was my first reptile that I kept as an adult. This is something I never would have thought of, but having a Sterilite bin around serves multiple purposes. So one of the biggest purposes is you can take them to the vet in it. If something comes up, especially in an emergency situation, you really don't have time to try to find something to put your animal in, and a Sterilite bin is perfect for that. Just stick them in and close it up and go. Another awesome thing you can do with Sterilite bins is give your animals baths in them, especially things like snakes. You can put a very low layer of water in that and close it up and have them soak, especially if they are having trouble shedding. Or in cases like bearded dragons, you can just fill it up and stick them in there and watch them take a bath. Another thing you can do with this is if you are disinfecting those tanks, you have a place to put your animal while you do that. Because obviously if you are using a bunch of heavy cleaning materials to clean that tank, you don't want your animal to be in that tank breathing in all those fumes. So having an appropriately sized Sterilite bin is going to be very, very helpful for multiple different reasons when you get your animal. Number four is one that I'm adding as I am editing this video because I can't believe that I forgot this one and that is a scale. Scales are super important to take the weight of your animal. Sometimes when you go to the vet you'll need their weight if you buy any kind of bearded dragon parasite medication, especially if you're buying it online at a place like beardeddragon.co. Sometimes you need that weight and it's also really good just to keep a check on your animal's weight if you think that maybe they're not eating enough or if they look like they are losing weight then you can know for sure whether or not your animal may be sick and needs to go to the vet. So definitely super important to have one of these laying around. I just use a kitchen scale that I got off Amazon and yeah, any kind of kitchen scale is gonna work perfectly for this. 
a temperature gun. This is something that I actually did not have right off the bat when I got Zaz, but it is something that is so helpful. You just shoot that temperature gun at a hot spot or to check the ambient temperature of a tank or even in a reptile's bath water to see what the temperature is. And it's just as simple as pointing it, shooting, and you're done. And you have an accurate temperature reading of that area. Super, super helpful. So much more helpful than just trying to solely rely on a thermostat forever because thermostats do mess up sometimes. And it's super helpful for just checking temperatures in a hurry. So highly recommended that you get a temperature gun and have it around. A thermometer hygrometer combo. So this isn't going to be something to spot check temperatures. This is going to be something that you are going to have to check ambient temperature of a tank, but it also comes in handy to make sure that humidity stays where it needs to be. Most reptiles have to have some humidity window that their tank has to stay in, and having that hygrometer thermometer combo in that tank is going to make walking by and peeking at the humidity super fast and easy. So highly recommend those. That's another thing that when you are very first getting your animal, you might not think to grab. And these are going to be especially important during during the very cold months of winter and the very hot months of summer when humidity and temperature in your house may change and you can just walk by and make sure that your tank isn't overheating. They are just very important and super convenient to have and most of the time they are very necessary to have. Extra basking bulbs and heat pads. Now this isn't for everyone so I know a lot of pet stores do sell basking bulbs and do sell heat pads. I always like to keep extra ones around my house because the the heat pads that I use, they do sell them in the store, but I get them off Amazon because they're like half the price on Amazon that you would pay from a store. So I just like to always have an extra one around my house. And the same with a basking bulb. Yes, you can run to Petco and grab a basking bulb, but if your bulb goes out at a super convenient time, like maybe let's say you're sick or something and you don't want to run out to that store, it makes such a big difference to just be able to go into a shelf and grab an extra bulb and just put it in and not have to worry about it or go and grab an extra heat pad and just use it and not have to worry about it. I get those heat pads from Amazon, but if my snake or my leopard gecko's heat pad goes out, I do not want them sitting there for two to four days without any kind of heat source. So I definitely make sure to always have an extra one of those on hand as well because those things do go out, especially those basking bulbs. Basking bulbs don't last for a super long time. Some do last a little bit longer than others. I found that the swamp turtle basking bulbs last like like forever. Mine just went out after like eight months, but basking bulbs and heat pads, it is super convenient to just have an extra one around your house. A thermostat. So I'm putting this on the list because there are still people that don't know that you have to use a thermostat with a heating pad. Thermostats are essential for you to have if you are using heating pads. Heating pads can easily get up to over 100, even up to 140 degrees, and that is way too hot for most animals, especially things like a leopard gecko that only needs 90 or a corn snake that only needs 80 to 85 degrees. Having a heat pad get that hot is dangerous for your animal. It can burn them. It is dangerous for the heat pad because they can catch on fire. It's just dangerous. So you have to have a thermostat if you are using a heat pad in order to regulate the temperatures where they're supposed to be. A pump spray bottle. So I guess this isn't really an essential, but once you use one of these, you will see why it is on this list. For a long time, for my humidity loving creatures, I just used the Dollar Tree spray bottles and those work. They are perfectly fine. But then I got a pump spray bottle and it makes life so much easier. It is so much easier to fill up a gallon jug of water and it just mists that tank down in no time. And it makes life so much easier. It makes spraying down tanks so much faster, especially if you have multiple humidity loving creatures, you need a pump spray bottle and they're not expensive at all. The Dollar Tree ones go out pretty fast. And so you're buying a lot of those. I get a pump spray bottle from Walmart. It's like between five and $10. It is definitely definitely worth it to invest in one of those. Some sort of shedding helper. So this is something that I actually did grab when I first got Zaz just because I saw it recommended on Amazon and I went ahead and threw it in the cart and I am so happy that I did. I feel like this isn't something a lot of people think about when getting their reptiles, but sometimes reptiles do have a little bit of trouble.
trouble shedding. And a shedding helper like these is going to moisturize your reptile skin and help it shed faster and easier. I cannot stress to you enough how wonderful these are. So yes, soaking your reptile will be helpful, but for animals like Zaz, who has a ball almost at the end of her tail, where when she was a baby before I got her, it looks like she had some kind of shedding issue and lost about the last inch, inch and a half of her tail. Shed gets stuck there and soaks usually don't help because of the way the skin is. And in my leopard gecko's case, she always has problems shedding the tip of her nose. So usually I have to spray her down with a shedding helper. So it's always nice to have these things around. You can use these to spray your animal directly to spray the shedded area. But what I like to do is soak them in a bath and actually pour some of that shedding liquid into the bath and let all of it soak into them at once. And then afterwards I spray a little bit directly on them and usually it helps super fast. I just wanted to make sure to throw that one in here because that has been very helpful for me and I have gone through multiple bottles of that across my animals. Some kind of shedding helper might come in handy for your animal and it's nice just to have. And this last one is more of an essential for reptile keepers who keep bioactive tanks. And that is a springtail culture. I get a lot of questions about this because springtails, I mean, they're not expensive, but if you are buying them often to do multiple tanks, it can add up quickly. So in my experience, having an actual culture of springtails is so much better and it makes a huge difference, especially when you set up multiple bioactives. Super, super easy to do. You buy one springtail culture. And when you get that, you are going to take charcoal. I like to break it into smaller pieces and put it in a container. The size of the container is going to kind of determine how many springtails you're going to get. So I use three pretty large Tupperware containers. Each one of those has charcoal in it. And then you're going to just fill half of that with water and you put something on top for them to eat. I use Josh's Frog Spring to Life, but you can also use nutritional yeast. You can use rice just plain uncooked rice. And basically what these things do is provide nutrition for those animals and provide a little bit of a fungus growth because that's what springtails do is they eat mold and fungus. And once those springtails are in that container and eating, they repopulate like crazy. And then you have an endless supply of springtails. So you are able to have that lifetime supply. You're able to set up new bioactive tanks with those, or you're able just to kind of refresh the ones that you have and say, so much money. So definitely have a giant culture of springtails if you're doing those. And that's it. That's my list of essential things that reptile keepers should have. If you can think of anything else, I mean, there's a million other things. Definitely make sure to leave those in the comments below, but that's it. I hope this was helpful, especially if you are just getting your first reptile or trying to build up your reptile supplies. I hope this was helpful. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by the Doobia Doo. The Doobia Doo com is the only place that I get dubia roaches now because they are so wonderful. Dubia roaches are my favorite feeder because I just really don't like crickets. Crickets stink and they die off really fast and you don't really have that problem with dubia roaches. Dubia roaches are also super nutritious. They have a lot more protein than crickets do and getting them from the dubiadoo.com you know that they are healthy. He feeds them all organic and they're coming directly to your house. So what more can you ask for? It is awesome. Make sure to use my code L at the doobiedude.com to save 10% off of your entire order. Thank you so much to the Doobie Dude for sponsoring this video. As always, guys, if you are not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday. Huge thank yous and shout outs to danny 84 Mayhew for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of stuff. Thank you so much, Danny. You are the bee's knees. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. This um it's because the let's go ahead and jump right it you're done. So